We started back in March in Paris. It all comes down to this for the Manufacturer's Series crown. And here's how the grid lines up. So on pole position, then our current leaders in the standings, Mercedes-Benz, Koda Lutkowski starting off for the grand final. Behind them, Toyota and Yamanaka. What can they do? It's between them and Mercedes, realistically, but one of this guys can overtake as well. BMW, Randall, Hollywood Hayward there starting for them. In fourth position, Shovey Yoshida in the Alfa Romeo. Very quick at the moment, but Lexus, of course, always a threat. Batty Bouffois starting the car for them. In sixth position, Aston Martin, Nick McMillan, they've moved up from the start, sixth place. What can they make out of this? A possible podium, we'll see. Hayden Hunter there in the Audi, not quite as fast as we thought they would be, but still in the hunt. Adam Taipei there, starting eighth position in the 4TT, and behind them is Florian Pagene in the Jaguar F-Type. Then in 10th position, it's Matt Simmons there in the Porsche, and then on the last row of the grid is Hyundai there with Duval. He'll be starting off. And then last but certainly not least, it's going to be Matthew McEwen in the Chevrolet. So then, let's see the tyre compounds for the first time, shall we? Mercedes-Benz started on the medium. Toyota started on the hard. Nobody going for the soft on the opening stint in this race here, Jimmy. That's going to be very interesting to see how it all plays out. So, I mean, this is, it is interesting because Mercedes, who are leading the standings right now on the, whoever won the first race first, of course, are now at this situation where they can try and put away from Toyota early, whereas BMW may come under attack uh, or may attack sorry, Toyota early on. So it's really going to be a strategy game, this one. I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be great. The grand final for the Manufacturer Series for the 2019 FIA Certified Gran Turismo Championships about to get underway. Then who will take the victory at the end of this race? But most importantly, who will be crowned the world champion in 20 laps time? We're about to find out as the grand final for the Manufacturer Series in Monaco is underway then. Mercedes-Benz leads the field over the timing line. Cody Nikola Lukowski takes the field down towards the first corner for the opening time of asking Team Toyota and Tomo Yamanaka into second position through the sweeping left hander we go. Keep an eye out for BMW. They're looking pretty handy on the opening stages of this one. Trying to close up into the slipstream. They've got a long run down in towards the next series of corners here. And are they going to be able to find a way past is the crucial question. We'll get the answer very shortly indeed. But over the crest of the hill we go. It's getting very exciting. Alfa Romeo and Lexus going side by side with the Japanese manufacturer up the inside and BMW pushed wide into the hairpin. Alfa on the inside as well into third place. Aston Martin. Martin are coming through here as well. This is getting aggressive on this opening lap. There's Let loads of time left here, but it's really exciting to see how it's all playing out. So Lexus and their aggression there, they caused all of that. And of course that benefited Alfa Romeo and put them up into third position. Now they have to try and hold up Lexus, Aston Martin and BMW behind them. Meanwhile for the lead, it's Toyota and Mercedes. They're side by side at the moment, current through the tunnel. This straight line speed of a Toyota wins out. And a Toyota on the hard compound of tyre goes into the lead. This is going to be disastrous there for Mercedes strategy. Meanwhile, Alfa Romeo is there as well, and Lexus, the top four, relatively close as well as Aston Martin on the back of the train there, coming up to our next big braking zone. Alfa Romeo looking to the inside, as it's Mercedes up the inside of Toyota. The brake just glowing there as they mash the brake, and Alfa Romeo on the inside. Are they going to take the lead here? This is unbelievable on the corner exit then for Alfa Romeo. Are they going to find their way past? They don't quite able, are able to do so. And Toyota continues on with the lead of the race. It was going side by side as well. I think between Mercedes-Benz and Aston Martin, Lexus get a one second penalty for colliding with another car here. Through the left-hander we go then. And it's going nose to tail at the end of this opening lap here. You can see Toyota just brushing the barrier as they pick up sparks on the outside as we come to the conclusion of the opening lap. An instant, meanwhile, Further back, under investigation between Ford and Audi. Audi have been demoted down to P11 at the end of lap one, so something has clearly gone on between those two different manufacturers. The upshot is, though, that Toyota leads the way as things stand. Well, one lap down, 19 to go. And look at that. You don't want that in your rear view mirror if you're Alfa Romeo. There is Cody Lukowski, of course. I imagine quite frustrated after being dethroned by Toyota and then being overtaken by Alfa Romeo. Coming up again to the first big breaking point of the circuit. Great camera work here. Mercedes on the inside, late on the brakes. They'll go through up the inside and Alfa Romeo. Yes, they do. Nice and easy there. Alfa there, although being harried by Lexus and Aston Martin. Bear in mind, though, that Lexus have that penalty. They'll be serving that very shortly. That will drop them way down the order. Disastrous ready for Lexus. That is a huge shame for them. They had a great resurgence, have had a great resurgence in performance. They drop all the way down into P7. It's really not when they'll have wanted a penalty there. 
either. Of course, there are no real track limits here at this uh, Tokyo Expressway South in the loop circuit because there's no circuit to run off of. But if drivers run along the wall on the outside and are deemed by the stewards to have gained an advantage, that is where they will serve a penalty. On board with Cody Nikola Lukowski of Mercedes-Benz, closing in the slipstream of the Toyota of Tomoki Yamanaka, who is behind the wheel and trying to find their way past. They draw alongside almost. Toyota going defensive down into the tight right-hander, which is about to come along the way. But going up the inside, nearly there for Lukowski. And keep an eye out for Alfa Romeo, who are really close in the background and are getting the elbows out massively here on lap two. But still side by side, almost we go for the race lead. Toyota, though, do hold on as BMW mugs out for a Mayo for third place. We were told this is going to be a slipstream race, and you can see that by the fact that the top six are all together on track right now. Of course, Mercedes Benz are now past uh, Alfa Romeo and up into second place, and of course, now chasing down Toyota once again. It's important for Mercedes Benz and for BMW to get by as soon as they can. They're wasting their time on the medium compound attire behind the Toyota here. And again, look how big and threatening that AMG looks there from the rear view camera. Toyota almost being pushed along as we come round to start lap three. First corner's the left hander. BMW Aston Martin on the inside of Alfa Romeo. They're going to be forced out wide there. There's no runoff here. Straight in the wall if you get things wrong, but they'll get through there in one piece. And again, slip streaming now down to the hairpin. Aston Martin there trying to tuck back in. Jaguar there on the inside of Aston Martin there. Put the slip stream to the top eight, covered by only about a second as we come on to that three and down to the hairpin once more. BMW on the outside past uh, Mercedes. Can they get past Toyota as well? I don't think they're going to quite manage it. No, this they are. They're fast out. Mercedes-Benz not quite fast out there. That was a great move there to hang it out dry and stay in second place. Tomoki Yamanaka firmly shutting the door out of that corner there. I think this is going to be one of those races where we're going to lose our voices at the end of it, Jimmy, because it's so exciting already. Already going, Tom. Already the... going. <laughs> <laughs> that bodes well, doesn't it, here in the grand final. But Toyota, it's hard to overstate, really, what a great job they're doing on that hard combat of tyre, holding up the BMW. Randall Hayward, the driver behind the wheel of that car, Oh, Nicolas Rublar, Coque Lopez, drivers to come. They're going to be in the slipstream. They're surely going to go left as Toyota will swing right and try and hold off the line and try and go defensive. They do indeed. Now it's side by side into the braking zone. Who is going to break latest? BMW going for the race lead. Is Randall Hay? We're going to get the advantage. He tries to go the long way around the outside. Will he manage to make it stick through the hairpin? Side by side, they come on corner exit and BMW leads here in the grand final. What a great move from Randall Hayward. Mercedes Benz and Aston Martin in the background going Hammer and Tom as well for trap position. Mercedes just holding on, but this is proving to be a very difficult third lap for the German manufacturer. They've lost the lead. They're now potentially set to lose the podium. That was a beautiful move from Randall Hayward. I, I lost the words. They're rounding outside of the hair, but you don't see that all too often. There are the live point standings, so I wouldn't trust them because the positions are changing very, very frequently. It looks like BMW starting to do something that no one else has so far and trying to put away there from the, from the pack to to their kind of holding people up in the background and of course Randall Hayward is on this medium compound attire if he can put it away this could bode very well for the BMW outfit now Mercedes-Benz are now trying to challenge Toyota again coming down in the sip stream it doesn't seem that the AMG has enough grunt to get by it seems to be the case there for uh, Mercedes-Benz and this could potentially be very favourable here for BMW as you see Toyota versus Mercedes then side by side they come then to the braking zone Toyota very close behind BMW Mercedes on the outside of the Japanese manufacturer coming through the right and then the left kink which will follow and back into the slipstream once more for Mercedes-Benz but I was saying that BMW depending on what happens behind them they could be potentially on course to win this one here because they're currently second in the standings as things go at the moment but if it all kicks off behind they're in the pound seats and that would be a hugely unexpected turn of events. Maybe. We will have to wait and see. This is the beautiful thing about the manufacturer's race and of course our final race with double points is that it can all go uh, we can all reverse very, very quickly. So Mercedes-Benz again stuck with Toyota. There's not much they can do from this tunnel section. They're all being dragged along by a BMW in front. It's kind of acting as the, the push through the air at the moment. And here we are then coming down to the braking zone once again. So right hand, our driver's turning. BMW sitting on the inside line. They're trying to give any space to Toyota. They actually push him out wide there, forcing him to take a wider line. And Mercedes are back through again. So Mercedes back into second place. 
and importantly for them, they're past Toyota. Toyota, I think, with a cork in the bottle. If they can work together, and by they I mean BMW and Mercedes, then maybe they can start pulling away from this battle because right now they have a four laps of just intense battling. And on that medium compound tyre, that's doing them no favours. They need to be trying to pull away and not be stuck battling with those on the hard. We're not used to seeing this, really, are we, in the manufacturing series? We're used to seeing the field spreading out on the different tyre compounds, not running nose to tail, as they pretty much have been in one long snake. You can see an incident under investigation for Aston Stop, Martin and here. Lexus here. Just trying to tune into the team radio, Baptiste Beauvoir there. What's he got to say, if anything? Not too much as we uh, just give him a bit of silence there, sadly. We missed on what he uh, had to say, but he's doing a very good job behind the wheel at the moment is the Frenchman. Meanwhile, this battle still continues on for the race lead. These drivers, of course, are going to be on lap six very shortly indeed. And when they do, of course, that'll be the last time uh, that they're able to use these tyres. The first scheduled pit stops will be taking place. Meanwhile, further back, look at Alfa Romeo having to defend as Jaguar. We're trying to have a sneaky look through. Porsche coming into play now, finally, here tonight as well. We haven't seen them battling, but look at fourth place as well as Lexus are really trying to attack against Toyota coming out of the king. That's the life point standings, but it'll be out of date by the next corner, I reckon, because Mercedes at as it stands at the moment, will be on top, but that's all going to be get set, getting set to turn on its head. A couple of little love taps there through the, uh, the series of right-handers with the Lexus and Toyota. They want to get by quickly as well. You can see the Toyota struggles a little bit through the corners, but then it's dragged back in with its straight line speed and also the slipstream in front. So, you know, when they announced this track for the grand final, I was a little bit sceptical. I was like, really? You're going to use this circuit and not maybe a more traditional circuit? But now I'm seeing exactly why they did. It's going to promote close racing all all the way to the end in the background as I say that another move looking to be made we can't quite see if that's been made or not on board now with Lexus though and again now they're right on the back of Toyota they're in the same position Mercedes-Benz were in a couple of laps ago where there's they can't really get past Toyota because of the straight line speedability of that group we should be looking at it through there the Lexus has no chance to a straight line compared to Toyota this is Baptiste Bivoire who are riding on board with then the Frenchman just coming through the right hander, J uh, Jim uh, Jimmy. Doesn't say James then. Goodness me. Excuse me. I know. I know. Very formal. Uh, he's doing uh, an absolutely brilliant job here, Jimmy, isn't he? Just to try and close up off the back of the Toyota. Damage limitation at this point here for Lexus. They're on the medium compound of tyres compared to the hard shot uh, Toyota. The good thing is for Toyota, they're getting that bogey tyre out of the way here in the opening stint. So they'll be on the medium and then the hard, the soft tyres, rather, I should say, uh, in the closing stages. So that will really help them out here. I think as we say bogey tyre, but I don't think it matters too much when you have a slipstream round over. You can just pull that time back in again. It takes a while to get out of the draft. And Mercedes Benz and BMW now uh, are going to fight coming down into the right-handers again. BMW just trying to stay, I think, at the front of the field right now and keep ahead of Toyota and Lexus. So the top four now starting to pull away from the rest of the pack. Alfa Romeo are still there, just about in the background, starting to fill out a draft range. Once you fill out a draft range, that's when I think the gaps are going to start uh, coming up again. That's why we have a top four breakaway at the moment. And Lexus is simply pushing Toyota. Look how close they are through the shot here. Look at that so close right now but they just can't quite get by very very close indeed back into the slipstream once again here for Lexus so clearly just don't have to grunt the straight line speed uh, to work with it through the tunnel we go then through into the right hander really does give a brilliant sensation of speed behind the wheel of these group three machines as we mentioned earlier on the onboard camera of course tracking where the driver will be looking through these corners it looks further ahead basically of course you have to look through the corner helps it open it up a little bit more you can see how late on the brakes Toyota were able to go into that corner too late on the brakes I think they've overshot it as have Lexus side by side now between Toyota and Lexus oh in fact into the pit lane there so I'm getting excited about nothing as they change over their tyres interestingly BMW choosing to stay out now I wonder if that's a good decision or not because everyone else has pitted it in the only uh, guys to go for the soft compound tyre are Ford so that could be interesting we'll see if that helps progress through the field again the BMW opting to stay out one more lap, so they won't have a draft from anyone around him. We'll see what sort of difference that makes. There are the strategies that we think we're going to see. The BMW said, no, nah, we aren't going to do that. So they don't actually fit into any of our uh, mission and tire strategies down there. So thank you very much, guys, for ruining our graphic. Um, <laughs> but uh, Mercedes-Benz uh, will lead those who have stopped so far. There is the fuel consumption graphic as well. Just letting you know that it's only 16 laps you can get out of the full tank around here. So there has to be a fuel refill at some point. And when you do that, of course, it's going to depend on how the race uh, unfolds for your team. So we're on board with Toyota again now. 
And we're in the draft of Mercedes-Benz. Familiar, Tom, is that? Uh... It seems to be, yeah. It's a bit of a recurring theme, this, isn't it, over the course of uh, this race. It's all kicking off as everybody comes out of the pit lane then, and all the drivers slot themselves into uh, position. You can see Audi going tumbling down the automobile. that they've had a bit of contact there with the wall. Aston Martin down in P7. Hyundai going down into 10th uh, position. But Team Toyota doing a very good job there in P3, drawing alongside Mercedes-Benz. Side by side we come. Just to remind you, we're live in seven different languages here for the grand final of the Manufacturer Series tonight. You can watch us in German, Spanish, French, Portuguese, Italian or Japanese, or you can carry on listening to us English blokes ranting on about what's going on here, but Toyota into second place then, now ahead of Mercedes-Benz, so this is getting very, very close indeed, and you can see Lexus there now trying to challenge, but on the hard compound of tyres. In theory, though, they're in the same boat as Mercedes-Benz, but as you said, Jim, it's kind of null and void with that slipstream. I was going to say, I wonder how the Japanese guys are reacting to the fat tote to just come up to second place, but they look their normal, calm selves. They're, <laughs> they're the only ones sitting. It's just a day at the office for them. BMW um, So they're into the pits now, so we're going to see what that has kind of cost them, or if it has cost them. So Nico Rubelar is going to be getting in the seat now. We know how far the Chilean driver is, but well, that was a good drive there by uh, Randall Haywood there, old Hollywood Haywood, as he's been come to know. And uh, he's very happy with that. Just gives a shake of the hand with uh, Philip Eng as well. Of course, he's here to oversee the operations for BMW. And out comes the BMW just behind Toyota. Will they have the speed to stay ahead of Lexus? They do, so they slot in between Toyota and Lexus. And this is actually a bad turn of events for, um, for Mercedes-Benz, they're falling down the order. It's really not gone well at all there for Mercedes-Benz. I think they ran wide going into that hairpin, and that is what has cost them a big amount of time, and also four positions inherently there as well. So the driver who's behind the wheel of that car, and Felix, is going to have to pull his finger and out and really try and put the hammer down. The advantage, of course, is that he has the slipstream. I suppose that's what Randall Haywood was hoping. He doesn't want to be in the lead. He wants to have the slipstream, as with everybody else. But there's just a bit more of a gap being created to Toyota and BMW at the moment. 1.6 seconds it sits at as we stand on lap eight. Now, this was stock car racing, and I was Lexus. I'd give the BMW a little bit of a bump in a straight line bump drafting. However, that is outlawed in uh, this series. Uh, so if you are caught bump drafting, you'll get a virtual slap in the wrist from our stewards. So here... Here's um, what happened to Mercedes. Let's have a look then. So they come down to the hairpin. Oh, just overshot it, I think. Very wide there. That allows Lexus through. And of course... So, oh, there's oh. contact there. So they were actually... That's interesting. So they went wide, but Lexus didn't really stop. They kind of just drove into them. So that might be something we'll see. The oh, stewards look into. As well. And Lexus there really getting the elbows out with Jaguar. And luckily, Jaguar just being able to hold that at the moment in the car right now for it has Jaguar. Nato. Is, uh, yeah, there you go. You got that before I did. So he did a good job of holding that from spinning. But now he's holding up his little train. Well, this is getting very exciting indeed and uh, hugely unpredictable. There is Andrew Brooks, who is behind the wheel uh, at the moment of the Lexus. And he has got it all to do there in P4. Here is Jaguar though, Vinces Nato, the Brazilian driver, trying to attack against BMW. What they need to do here is they need to work together because Toyota are clearing off out in front in this here race. You can see there as they come down through, I think there's a glitch on the timing screen there, by the way. Yep, it does just reset itself, so three seconds the advantage now sits for Toyota. They've been able to break away, but it's all kicking off further in front, as you can see. Getting a bit of a biff through there, that was yeah. out from air this time. I think getting roughed up. But as you said, Tom, all this is doing is letting Toyota romp away. And potentially costing them the Manufacturer Series world title here tonight as well for Mercedes-Benz. So it's not going the way of Ant Felix. The thing is for those guys, they, 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 he's got to be on the tyres for a minimum of five laps in this race. He's got to do it. He can't just jump out of the car. They can't just stick uh, Tom Lartiu in for the closing stint uh, for as long as they want. They have to run a minimum of five laps in this one. So if uh, Ant Felix continues to get bumped around like he is doing so far and roughed up, this could be potentially very, very costly indeed for the German manufacturer as uh, BMW we thought something had gone wrong there briefly but it's all okay warning being given to Lexus for their conduct out on track we saw some contact with Mercedes-Benz earlier on and a bit with Jaguar to boot there as well but uh, Jaguar slowly just making their way through the field very quietly through in this race now sitting in second position and in a very good position here at the moment we knew Jaguar would be strong here they've got a lot of straight line speed in that F-time Grand Fury car and it seems there uh, BMW driver actually opting to stay behind for now. So Rubel are thinking better of it and thinking, you know what, maybe I'll save it for the straight in the end. There's no point uh, getting by now than giving the Jaguar a sip spin all the way down to the last overtaking point on the circuit. Really, you want to overtake okay, at this okay, 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 coming okay, up. Okay, okay. Uh, just listening to Rubel and uh, Coque Lopez there talking to one another in Spanish. Asking about tyres, I think it was there, who was on what tyre. 
Uh, was that a bump there? I think it Cuidado might si la curva rápida te intentan... Uh, just trying to translate the Spanish. I lived in Spain for two years, but sadly it's conversational at best. And, uh, well, it all continues on in this race. And now Nicolas Rubelar is in the position to attack against Jaguar. Here is what happened between Lexus and Jaguar. This was a side-by-side -side action coming down into the right-hander. Was there contact? There was indeed. BMW coming into play there as well. Side-by-side, -side, Jaguar on the inside. And I think there was some contact maybe with BMW. No, not quite through there, but oh, there was the contact. And the Lexus just squeezed out as Jaguar gave them no room. Yeah, hit the wall, then pinballed back to the Jaguar. But luckily, they, uh, there was no further incident there. Alfa Romeo now up into third position. So Nicolas Rublar there, and his hesitation has actually cost him a place as uh, Alfa Romeo. The, uh, definitely a resurgence. Not, not a great first race at Alfa Romeo, but they've been doing so well since then. And this could be an unlikely podium for the Italian manufacturer. This is a team that uh, no one thought would be doing, well, I mean, to be fair, they're not that well in this mm. uh, series. They're not at the uh, best run of things. Their BOP's not been fantastic for uh, previous events, but here, I think a lot better. Just missed out, of course, on the top six qualifier, though, earlier on. De that's definitely a sign that they've been doing very well. A good resurgence in form then for Alfa Romeo. Here's the live point standings as it sits then. 46 points, you can just see the car class if you've just joined us. Group 3 machinery equivalents of the real world FIA GT3 class. Fully fledged race cars, wider bodies and, uh, bodies and aerodynamic kits on the cars. And you can see what that means in a straight line for these drivers as well as they try and use the slipstream. Going defensive there in front of Mercedes-Benz is Lexus just in the forefront of his shop. Alfa Romeo get the better of Jaguar for P2 then. So that's a nice sneaky move up the inside through into the hairpin for Alfa Romeo. The Italian manufacturer is on the podium and this is the best performance we've seen from them all season long. If they, if they can pull this off, this will be a podium for them here. But we still have half the race yet to run. And uh, ooh, everyone there going into the barrier on exit. That's going to slow them up coming onto the straight. And the courses allow the cars behind to get a little bit closer. So Jaguar there, BMW in fourth. Lexus and Aston Martin very close for fifth and sixth position. And here comes Jaguar. Look at the straight line speed of our left type. It makes me feel proud inside as a Brit, of course. Look at it go <laughs> down towards the hairpin again. Alfa Romeo, all they can do is tuck back into the slipstream and try and lose as little speed of time as possible as we come down to the hairpin again. So not much more time now, only a couple more laps until we see the next run of pit stops. And here, looking back from the Jaguar, you can see the straight line speed advantage that Jaguar has. Accelerations there, and Alfa Romeo not able to keep up. But watch this Alfa Romeo for the corners. It's a very quick car in the corners, this Alfa Romeo, and it will just eat the gap back up again, and we'll do it all again coming on to lap 11. So then, tension is in the air at the halfway stage in this Manufacturer Series Grand Final. Alfa Romeo just running a little bit wide there as Jaguar are not too far in front. They've got the advantage of the slipstream. Meanwhile, Toyota have absolutely cleared off in this one. 5.8 seconds and increasing lap after lap in this race. Behind the wheel of the car at the moment is Réan de Rouge, the Frenchman, who is doing brilliant things. He's just able to keep it consistent, keep it calm, keep it controlled. And now he is nearly six seconds ahead of the rest of the field. This is one of the best drives we have seen from Toyota all season long and this is when it counts the most. Doing exactly what they need to do which is just pulling laps right now. They were fortunate enough to break away from this pack behind. They're going to have the soft tyres in reserve at the end. They don't have a slipstream though and this is what happens. They're all squabbling over the podium and Toyota in the meantime are like all right fair enough you guys do that. I'm going to focus on you know winning this thing. And that's allowed Ray and DeRouche to put away. The advantage for Toyota, they got the hard tyres out the way early doors, they're on the medium, now they're on the soft. If they're on their own in clear air, then that surely is barring a mistake in the surefire way. Yeah, not this uh, one. Securing the chequered yes. flag. Here's Ray, let's see what he's got to say. And inevitably nothing as we cut back to that, of course, that's <laughs> the way it goes. Uh, warning being given to Aston Martin for colliding with another car. Yeah, I'll tell you what, it has been a difficult day in the office for Aston Martin, hasn't it? Such promise at the start of the season, taking the Manufacturer Series win back in Paris. Since then, it's just gone downhill. It's been even worse for Audi, though, who are my uh, pick to come through the field, and uh, they did, <laughs> which is unfortunate. Still got half the race to go, or nearly anyway. Alfa Romeo again looking up the inside, so it's BMW, that's Jack, I think that's Lexus Force Wilder, that's what it is, yeah. Sideways there, uh, the BMW, Nico Rublar, we see that from him, he's very, he likes to oversee the car quite a lot in this game. Not good for the rear tyres, of course, he'll have the inside line for the next corner, but it's going to be a drag race down there, and it seems that the BMW is able to uh, uh, pull back up behind, so the Lexus, sorry, had the, the speed out of there, BMW sure. could not get the move done. Here is Jaguar and Alfa Romeo. NATO versus Regalado. You see Jaguar just right inside your screen. Trying to pass him after the dock. 
So trying to Not pass before. him after the dock. So the dock being the, the, uh, the bit at the bottom there, the area. So maybe you said, try and pass him at the hairpin. What I was Everyone saying Everyone go to the softs, right? Yeah. Pit in, pit in. Pit in this lap. Pitting in this lap then for those guys. So everybody else will be following pit, pit suit as they lap. all continue on the uh, same strategy within this race. It's getting very interesting indeed. i tell you what, I end up an absolute shocker here tonight as well. Down in 12th place, 14.2 seconds off the rest of the field, off of the back of Audi. Tell you what though, this goes from 2nd to 11th, this train right now, so it's definitely far from over from anyone in this little train at the moment. One slip up from anybody and positions could change just like that. So looking back again, from Jaguar. Now, we've heard the instructions for Regalado. He's been told, try and pass him coming up to the hairpin on your in-lap. Don't let him come into the pits before you because otherwise he might be slowing. He might slow us up more. And we want to try and go after Toyota, but at this stage, seven seconds, it's going to be a very hard ask for anyone to close it down, especially as it's going to be in the soft compound attire at the end. I guess he's going to be on that soft compound. Eagle Frog. Precisely. We know what Eagle Frog can do with a clear track and a soft tyre. That is for sure. So, uh, Let's see how it all plays out. Down into the hairpin, Ryan Darouche. I tell you what, he has just driven superbly. I think it's so hard to overstate how well he's done. Into the pit lane then he comes from the mediums onto the softs. Igor Fraga will come in. They've got to take fuel on board here as well, don't forget. They will uh, have to make that pit stop as everybody else follows in suit. Everybody making their final stops here in this race. Ford continuing on uh, by the looks of things. Hyundai also down there in uh, 12th position. I tell you what I want to know, Jimmy, what happened to Chevrolet's pace earlier on? They were in the top six qualifier there, don't forget. They've had an absolute disaster here tonight. At this track too. I think mm. they shuffled out. I mean, bear in mind that, as I said, the train from 2nd to 11 is pretty much everybody. So it's just a matter of being in the wrong place at the wrong time. So let's see who comes out where. Of course, Toyota uh, a, a net a net first, because the Ford are still yet to pit. Alfa Romeo come out ahead of Lexus, and Jaguar there with the, the big fuel stop have lost out massively. They were running in second position, or net second, I should say, and now they're down behind Audi and just ahead of Aston Martin. That's what happens when you get your fuel in wrong. They were trying a bit too hard. Everyone else is maybe saving a little bit of fuel because there has to be a fuel stop here. This is the last pit stop to do so, and that's what it's cost them. And that's what it promoted them, of course, up into that position in the first place, having not made that, uh, that pit stop then. You can see Porsche side by side with Lexus as they come down in towards T1. Porsche on the inside, Lexus on the outside. Pick your lane, boys, up the inside go Porsche and through into the podium, uh, the fourth place rather I should say, here in this race. That is Angel Inestrosa, the Chilean driver who is his second time out of the country and doing very good things now behind the wheel. This is what we were expecting to see from Porsche here this weekend. It's not been their way at all. They're out of contention for the overall Manufacturer Series Championship and that's at the cost of uh, two very poor first races for the team. Now, finally, they're coming good, but it's a bit too little too late. Speaking of coming good, a team that need to come good in the closing stages of this one now is Team Mercedes-Benz. And the man behind the wheel, Tom Lartiu, he knows how to come good. He needs to get through straight away. He needs to get up into second place. He is not going to be catching Toyota, I don't think. I'm not sure that's going to be possible, even with this draft train. But the thing is, right, when everyone's on the soft tyre, no one's on the soft tyre. Neutralise them. We all have the same level of grip from those soft compound tyre. It would only be Ford who won't be on the soft compound tyre. So here comes Tom Martino. There he gets a great run coming out of the tunnel. Looks to the inside of Lexus. He has to run. And there's contact between the two. And Mercedes Benz, I think, forced into the wall there, but still managed to go through. Now looking up the inside of the Porsche. Chevrolet coming through in the background too, as well. And there it is, right on the rear quarter panel of that Lexus. It's going to be again another drag race here. And I think Tom has it in the Mercedes Benz. He'll come back onto the race and line to defend, but they're all over the track behind him, and now he's going to try and look onto the back of Porsche. Through into the right hand, and we go then running nose to tail. This is what the slipstream does in this race. We knew it was going to be that way, and it's proven to be hugely exciting here, and this could potentially help Mercedes-Benz. They are a bit too far to close up onto the back of Toyota. You might see, of course, Ford leading the race, but they haven't made their final pit stop here in this one. They've got to go onto another compound of tyres and will drop inherently down the order. So this is effectively the fight for second position here in this race. Here is Alfa Romeo, though, with Porsche all up there. Chuffer trying to find their way past into the left hand of turn one no opportunity presenting itself there thus far you can see the incident between mercedes-benz and lexus under investigation there what do you think on that one there jimmy i know we only saw it briefly uh, I, I, yeah well there you go just a warning there i think moving a little bit 
Now here comes Porsche and Mercedes-Benz. Mercedes-Benz kind of stuck in behind Alfa Romeo there. They can't go for the move just yet. Tom showing a little bit oh, of patience. God. And oh, wide there. Alfa Romeo forced wide and in to Porsche. And now they're getting pushed out by Lexus too. Into the wall, just about tucked back in in time. And on the outside there, I think that's BMW who touched the wall. And just like that, Danny Solis goes from third down to fifth position. But now he'll have the slipstream. I was going to say, uh, if there's anyone I don't want to be right now, it's Danny Solis. And that's why you are the first person at the top of the line. Everyone wants to be there. And Tom Martiu straight away goes up into third position. Ten seconds, though, to Toyota. Four make their final pit stop, then on to the uh, medium compound of tyres. Toyota will take over at the front in this race, and they are doing great things out there. Igor Fraga is doing brilliant stuff. 10 seconds, the advantage it sits now, and only six laps, soon to become five from home here at the Tokyo Expressway. Moving that further back, though, you can see it's all kicking off further behind, though. And Tom Lartiu, he's like a squirrel up a tree at the moment, trying to pull away from these guys. He's just trying to pull the pin, but he's just got no opportunity to do so with the drivers behind, holding onto that slipstream. You can see Ford, they're trying to attack as they came through. So they obviously made their fuel pit stop earlier on, and they've now emerged right in this fight in the closing stages. That's a great call there for Ford. They've now put themselves right in the middle of this squabble for second position. They're going to come out ahead. Oh, and saying that they've made a mistake into the wall, and BMW! Oh, BMW suffered greatly there, trying to avoid that, and Ford, from a fantastic strategic decision, had a big mistake coming out the pits, and of course that allowed Alfa Romeo and Lexus back through again. And that's actually created a little bit of a gap between the uh, fifth place and sixth and seventh behind, so that might have broken the train. So then, Armin Agakar makes a mistake coming out of the pit lane then. We thought they'd be a bit more out of position than they are there for, but if it wasn't for that mistake, we could have potentially seen them fighting for the podium. There's still five laps remaining. We may still see them fighting for the podium. Over the brow of the hill we go into the dockyard section then. Through into that corner we go. Everybody taking it very nicely. Incident under investigation, as you can see, between Ford, Alfa Romeo, BMW and Lexus. Well, the steward's going to have to decipher that one and unravel it and see what the uh, cause of that there was. Let's have another look at it here, Jimmy. What do you think? So watch the Ford here. Just gets it wrong. Bounces off the wall into the Lexus. And, yeah, they, they were slow at the corner. BMW just didn't see them. They were unsighted and went into the back of them and slowed them right down. Of course, put them now down into 11th position, right at the back of this train that we've been seeing for the entire race. It's so great to have such close racing, of course, but I just wish that Toyota were a bit closer. So... If things ended as they were, Lexus would just about inherit the podium. So this fight now for third and fourth between Lexus and between Alfa Romeo, that is everything. That is the last step on the podium. So then, let's see what is going to happen in the closing stages of this race. Alfa Romeo really very, very much in contention for a top three finish in this race and potentially in the final Manufacturer Series standings of 2019. It's going to be exciting to see how it all plays out. No further action there. I think the right call from the stewards. Racing incident, nothing more that could be done. Yeah, annoying, of course, if you're BMW, but those, those things happen in racing sometimes. Again, on board with Dan Solis, you can see just how hard he's concentrating. Again, heart beating out of his chest. I think he knows knows if they beat Lexus, they're going to be on the podium here at the grand final of the Manufacturing Series. And look to the outside there, coming down the long yes, run the to the left-hander. Let's see what he says. Yeah, yeah of we're, course, yeah, it we're. stops as soon as we, uh, we start, start stop talking ourselves. Goes round the outside of a Lexus there, gets that move done. The Lexus slow coming up to that corner. What they need now is to get onto the back of the Mercedes-Benz. They need that draft. They need to be pulled along. Again, this third and fourth battle, whoever finishes in front, out of Alfa Romeo and Lexus will take the last step of the podium with seemingly the first two already decided. Well, it's all but over yet. Yeah, anything can happen in motor racing, and we know that it usually does there as well. You can see just how close that battle for third place in the overall standings between Alfa Romeo and Lexus is. 29 versus 28, one point would separate them come the chequered flag. But we're now coming over the timing line uh, once again, or will be very shortly indeed for these drivers. Excited to see how it all plays out for them. Chevrolet there in P5, just in the background. Team Toyota, though, with Igor Fraga. This will be a very well-deserved confidence boost here for Igor after yesterday's misfortune in the Nations Cup, a full team effort that it has been for Yamanaka and Rayanne Darouche. Nature of the beast, you know you're part of a team here, you need to work, otherwise the whole team fails. And that, of course, can be said for Yamanaka, for Darouche, and, of course, for Igor Fraga, who picked himself up yesterday after what will be a very disappointing exit from the Nations Cup. Right now, all he has to do is drive to the end. There's not really much pressure on the Brazilian driver. The only person who can ruin this race for him 
is him. So he needs to be very careful in these last few laps. Again, the squabbling still going on. Where does Chevrolet come from? They've come out of nowhere. The Corvette there, speeding up through the fruit of Ville, then contact there of Alfa Romeo. Now, the thing is, right, you're Alfa Romeo. You're, all you're concentrating is on, on, is on Lexus. It doesn't matter really what Chevy does. Lexus sideways there in the background, just about gathering it back up again. You don't want to be sideways around here. It's all kicking off further back as well. Porsche Jaguar versus Ford. So there we are, we can see it all kicking off between uh, those drivers. Ford now just dropping down into 10th position. Thing is right, you're in the grand final now, your Mercedes Benz, your Alfa Romeo, where Chevy finished don't really matter for you. It doesn't really matter what happens for that. Do you let him by? Do you let him go? Because you see how aggressive, how quick that Corvette, as you were saying earlier on, they were really quick in qualifying. Mm. Now finally they've found that pace. Yeah, exactly. And they could prove to be the cork in the bottle that uh, the other teams around them need. Here is Koke Mizuno from Japan. We're used to seeing him in our top 16 superstars races. Here's a replay of it all kicking off then. This is Chevrolet trying to attack. You can see Lexus a little bit deep there on the brakes now from Mayo. Also in the mugs of mix. Chevrolet, what a move that is from Koke Mizuno. Pulling alongside on corner exit, getting a great tight line through the hairpin, really able to take profit, then drew side by side with Alfa Romeo, and we're able to get through into the podium position. Goink, I think it's a word for that. <laughs> I'll take that. And uh, up into third spot. So now he'll be the one giving the draft to the, the crazy train behind him. And uh, look at that. Putting onto the back of the, of the AMG like it's standing still. Look at the draft and the straight line speed of the Corvette, the V8, American V8 Power, of course, that very mean looking C7 Group 3 car coming down to the hairpin now. What can Tom do, if anything? Corvette looking to the outside, such confidence there. My word, that's how you want to do it. He's really showing. I don't think he meant to pass it. He's going to show you, you know what? Look, I'm going to pass you, mate. Look, look how much quicker I am. And just like that, Tom now has his, uh, his view back in the rear view mirror. This could potentially be very costly indeed here for Mercedes-Benz. You've seen how costly one mistake has been there, or one error, even if it's not his own fault, uh, for BMW down in ninth position. They were fighting for the podium at just a handful of laps to go. Now they are down in the lower half of the top ten with Ford right up there, back bottom, trying to find their way past. In the slipstream we go then once again with Alfa Romeo. Down the start, finish straight to start another lap here at the Tokyo Expressway. Southern in a loop in the Manufacturer Series Grand Final. Danny Solis behind the wheel of the car at the moment. Alonso Regalado, Sugar Yoshida, the two drivers who have been doing very good things behind the wheel of that car to get them in such a good position here within this race. And now they're in contention for a podium here as well. And potentially, as we said earlier on, that top three in the overall standings for the Manufacturer Series. Aston Martin here can really upset things for Lexus. They're going to start fighting with Lexus, who are fighting for the podium with Alfa Romeo. And they're forced wide by the British brand. Aston Martin goes up into fifth position, overtaking Lexus and that is a big, big blow to their podium aspirations. If they cannot beat Alfa Romeo on circuit, they will not be taking the podium here today at the World Finals in Monaco. So this little train at the moment is incredibly important for Lexus. They need to get back into it again. So we're watching Corvette, Alfa Romeo being pulled along by the American car. And of course, in the background now, Aston Martin is so much faster, that car in a straight line, already dropping the Lexus as we come up to the hairpin again, coming through this very fast section, very sweeping. This is where the downforce really has to be used to its greatest effect. And now down to the hairpin, Mercedes on the inside, late on the brakes, Corvette looking to the outside. Can they make it round? No, still there. What was that Alfa Romeo on the inside there? They had a look, Alfa tried to get by Corvette there. They wanted to try and get another car between them and Aston Martin, but Corvette still, sorry, uh, Chevrolet still staying up into third place. And Alfa Romeo has to keep their eyes in the mirror. I would not want to be Danny Solis right now. I can tell you that. So coming round the last section, once more about to come on to the penultimate lap. Here's Mercedes-Benz, there's Chevrolet, there's Alfa Romeo, and here we are then, penultimate lap, Mercedes leaves this train, Toyota well out in front at the moment, but anything can happen in this little train. Certainly could then, over the timeline we go to start the penultimate lap in the Manufacturer Series Grand Final, then down in towards that first corner we go for the second to last time of asking BMW to be given a 10 second slowdown penalty here then. So that is absolutely huge for the German manufacturer. They're sitting in seventh position here currently. That Koke was... Lopez. I've got a, a, a steward notification that that's them for not following the tyre rules. They've not gone on all three compounds of tyres. I think they have, but... Uh, we'll no, he's done absolutely nothing. 
I think there is going to be some, again, choice points there, but meanwhile, sorry, Ken Dennis will come over you, but Corvette and Alfa Romeo together, contact between the two, again, Alfa Romeo need to finish ahead of Lexus for the podium, they're sitting on the inside, where are Lexus, what happened to Lexus, they're down to 11th place, there was an instant there, we we didn't see that, and I think that's their podium effort over and done with. Well, that is absolutely huge Norris, there for Norris, Lexus then. Norris. They could be potentially out of contention. They're going to have to have the mother and father of all laps. Here come Audi. They're pulling alongside Aston Martin here. Side by side oh, action shit. we go then. The German manufacturer versus the British Corvette in front here. The Chevrolet team in uh, the forefront of your shot on the podium positions coming down through the right hander into the hairpin. You can see Chevrolet defending Aston Martin on the outside. Audi try and go the long way on the inside then. Will they get the brakes done? Will they get the move done? Yes they do and they go up into fourth place here on the penultimate lap easy boys coming you've got one more lap to go at the moment Alfa Romeo has gone down to sixth position not sure what that does to the, the rankings Aston Martin may be in with a chance of a podium themselves here if they can get past Corvette Alfa Romeo need to get by Audi they need more points than this this is going to go down to the wire there's contact against the wall there they're all driving their hearts out at the moment onto the penultimate lap Mercedes Benz Thankfully for them, have a bit of a gap now, so they're clear of this gaggle, but we're on board with Audi at the moment. Behind us is Alfa Romeo, and in front of all of this is Toyota and Igor Fraga. This is going to come down to the line to who gets the last step of the podium. I tell you what, my heart is beating out of my chest more than when I watched the Rugby World Final a few weeks ago. This is absolutely fantastic in the Manufacturer Series Nation, uh, Manufacturer Series Cup, then. Here we go, then, side-by-side -side action between the Audi and the Aston Martin. Four position Chevrolet on the the outside as we come down into the dock section then for the last time of asking three wide with Aston on the inside look at that absolutely brilliant Audi on the outside Chevrolet come through and also here at Alfa Romeo on the inside they clip the wall though that's going to compromise their drive and Chevrolet is surely going to try and take profit here but they do draw side by side Audi into third place Aston into fourth and Chevrolet sit P5 it's going to be a high speed game of chess now as we come through the last part of the course for the last time Martin Gray with a bit of a smile this place I think hiding his frustration but I say that Audi right now if they stay where they are they will take the last place in the podium it's Audi and Aston Martin side by side Alfa Romeo there too as are Corvette Aston Martin better head into third place Audi they're trying any way to get around can Martin Grady use his years of experience to lift Audi onto the podium. And down in towards the corner we go. Look at Audi on the inside. Alfa Romeo are looking aggressive. In, Chevrolet breaking very late indeed. Go, 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 as well go, as Alfa Romeo. Yes, yes, Aston Martin on the inside. Oh, oh, oh no! Oh, go down oh, with Aston and Audi. And oh, Audi goes no. spinning round no. on the last lap of the Manufacturer Series Grand Final. And Toyota, 21 races, six World Tour events. And they are Manufacturer Series Champions of the World in 2000. 2019, Toyota win the Manufacturer Series here at the World Final in Monaco. Mercedes-Benz, they fought right until the end, but they come home second best in second place on the road. And Corvette and Chevrolet finish just in third position at the very end of that race. Alfa Romeo fourth, Aston in fifth.